we're gonna be building a full web scraping app with just JavaScript. So let me tell you about my idea. I really like this site called kid.co, which allows creators on YouTube to share what gear they're using. So camera, microphone, lighting, and so on. Now I've got a confession to make. For some reason, I always end up watching those setup tour videos. You know, my perfect minimalist setup, that kind of thing. Maybe because I'll never be that neat or just don't necessarily want to buy that stuff. I don't really know why. I just like those videos. So I thought it would be interesting to combine these two ideas that are both successful. Uh, essentially a kid.com just for setups that's well organized, has links to Amazon, and maybe even a setup tour video. The cool part's going to be this app requires minimum user input. So with just a channel URL, we can pull in a bunch of data from YouTube. And the same with a product. From an Amazon URL, we could pull in data from Amazon. And you could probably guess we're going to do this with web scraping. And it's always good to do a little bit of planning up front to save you time later when you start coding. To get this done, we'll break our system into four distinct pieces. First, the front end, which connects the user to the API through a form. The user will enter a YouTube channel URL, which gets sent through the API to scrapers, which will then pull that data from YouTube. Finally, the result will be inserted in our database and then later serve to the front end when we reload the page. So it looks a bit complicated, but it's actually just one big loop of scraping, inserting and serving back to the front end. We'll do more whiteboarding at each stage to break it down further. So here's the stack we'll use for those four components. Nothing too complicated here. We're going to use just vanilla plain JavaScript on the front end, Express API, Puppeteer to scrape, and then a MySQL database with the type ORM, ORM. The only things we'll need up front though are Node.js, NPM, and MySQL installed. Okay, we're about to start coding the front end, which is made up of three main sections. The header, the input box, and the list of creators rendered in card format. More specifically, we'll fetch a list of creators from our API, and then we'll want to render those on the page as HTML divs. As mentioned before, we'll also have to link our form to our API when we add a new creator with an event listener for clicking on that submit button. As you can see, we're starting from absolute zero. I'll create a folder called client, which has a file inside it called index.html. Notably though, we'll have our JavaScript and CSS directly in this one file, just to keep everything together. I really like this HTML preview extension for VS code, which just changes whenever you save. First thing I always create is some helper functions, which allow us to add new items to the document. So the first function I create is called new element. It takes a type, which will be, for example, header, div, image, and then a object of attributes that will apply all those attributes to this element. We can create a new element with a create element method. Then it'll iterate through those attributes, checking one at a time. And then finally, this will apply that attribute with inner text being a special case of just setting the property instead of running a function. Now, if I create a div like this, select it like this, I can create a child element like this and then append it. If we add a bit of style, we could see this show up. So here's how that looks. More importantly, if we have a list of creators, we can loop through them like this and we'll add a header and image inside our card. If we update the style a bit, it's already looking not too bad. Now, if I want to add a new creator, I'll have to put in the HTML for that that prompts the user to paste in the channel URL. I'm also adding a class to that input. Now with an on-click handler, that's attached to a new function. We can extract that value and then send to a server that we're going to create. We're now on part two, the API. We just need to create a single route slash creators with two methods, get and post. This adheres to REST API standards. As mentioned, we'll use Node.js and the really simple backend framework Express. Okay, I want to create a new folder for my server. And within that folder, I will create a file called index.js. Now I'll go down to my terminal and I want to change into that server directory. I'll do an npm init so we can start installing dependencies. Then I'll npm install express. I also need to install the library body parser. Whenever I'm creating a new express app, I always go to expressjs.com getting started. Hello world. Then I literally just copy this code and paste it. 
if you save it and then start the server with node, it will just work. So all you need to do is update the routes. Here I'm going to change this get route to get creators. And we'll also want a post route to create a new creator. I've added these async keywords because we're going to have to interact with our database, our scrapers, and so on. Let's just return some mock data for now. You can test my server with curl on the command line. I'll leave it to do here to remember to update this later. Post is a little bit more complicated. That's where the body parser library comes in. We want to import it like so, and then create a middleware to extract JSON from the body of our request. We also need this custom middleware that will disable security rules for local development. With that out of the way, we should be able to log out our request body and leave two more to do's here for later. Let's jump back to our front end and delete that list. We'll replace it with an async function that we'll fetch to our API. Within it, we'll use the native JavaScript fetch function. We'll wait for that to finish and move all our render code inside too. And we use the .json method to extract the actual data. We can't forget to actually call the function after we define it. And when I save, my creators for my server are sent over in a response. We'll want to hit that post route in our submit channel listener. So I'm pasting in a fetch post to that slash creators route. We want to be sure we're sending a serialized object in the body. That is a string object. To test it, we'll just log out that rec body. It should send over this string of text. And we got it on the other side, so we're all good. We are halfway there. We just need to scrape and set up our database. Our scraper is just a function that takes a URL as an input. It'll reach out to YouTube, grab the data, and then return it to be inserted into the database. When our scraper visits YouTube, it'll see this information on a channel. We're going to want to extract that avatar URL image and the title of the channel. This is easier than you might think, so let's code it up. I'll just create another file called scrapers.js in the server folder. And we want to install Puppeteer as a dependency. I'm just importing the library like so, which will allow us to do our scraping. Then I created an async function called scrape channel, which takes the URL as an argument. We always want to launch our browser first, create a new page, and then navigate to our URL that we passed in. Okay, now we have to decide on the items we actually want to scrape. If I look at a channel, there are two items I want to extract, the channel name and the avatar URL. I can extract an item by right-clicking it, going to inspect, it'll reveal itself in the HTML, and then I will go to copy, copy XPath. Back in my code, I'll write this get by XPath function and paste the XPath as an argument. This destructuring syntax will pull out the first item from the array this function returns. We extract the text from this HTML element by getting property text content. And finally, we get this into a string by awaiting text.json value. Getting the avatar URL is very similar. We jump back over and inspect. I copy the XPath and then paste it in an almost identical function. This time I want to extract the source property. And again, I'll capture that in a string with JSON value. Finally, I'll close my browser and then return these properties in an object. I'll also log them out so we can test this and temporarily call the function at the bottom of the file with my channel name as an argument. I'm gonna run this file with node. It looks like we got the avatar URL, but name didn't quite work. So I'm gonna jump back over, inspect, and this time copy, copy full XPath. I'll paste that in. It doesn't look as nice, but it'll get the job done. I'll run that again, and I got the channel name. I'll export the scrape channel function and import it in our API. In our post creators route, I'll then call that function with our rec body value. So if we start up our server, open index.html, and then paste in the channel here, everything should work the same. And there it is, so our scraper is working. Okay, we've made it to the last part of our stack, the database, and we'll use a MySQL table to represent creators. This table will have the following columns with ID being auto-generated. We can always add more columns in the future as we see fit. And you'll see this is a pretty close match with the data we scraped and the data we require on the front end. And again, for this part, you're going to need MySQL installed. You're going to want to make sure we can connect by entering it in the command line. And then from here, we can create a database for our app. And that's all we're actually going to need the command line for. Next, we'll create a db.js file in the server folder. 
An ORM basically allows us to semantically interact with our database. In other words, we convert our tables into models that we basically treat like JavaScript objects. We're also going to need to install the MySQL library. So we'll import type ORM and we'll create our first model for a creator. This model will have properties for ID, name, image, and YouTube URL, which is everything we want to store in our database table. Now we need to create the schema for this. This is a formalized definition of the schema and how it maps to our database. We import a class from type ORM to help us do this. For our creator schema, we call that function, passing in name and the model as the target. We then formalize our table columns with the type and other special properties if applicable. To interact with our database, we need to create a connection. We use the type ORM create connection method and pass in a bunch of properties. You can use type ORM for different types of SQL databases. And by default, they're running on localhost port 3306. And here I'm going to want to put the name of the database that I created. Okay. I'll create the function that we'll use in our get creators route that will just return everything from our creators table. Starting out, we'll make the connection on the connection. There's a get repository method, which just gives us access to that table. If we call the find method on the repository, it'll select everything in that table for us. Since we have our data, we'll close the connection. Of course, we'll want to export that function for use in our API. Flipping back over to the API, we import our database methods. We'll delete our mock data and put our function in here, although it's not ready until we have data in our database. For that, let's create a second function called insert creator, which takes everything we need as arguments. We create the connection first again. Then we need a model and here we manually set the properties after creation, just so things are a little bit more clear. We connect to the creator repository in the same way. And then we use the save method to save that model we created. Finally, we can return a list of all new creators to refresh the page and close the connection. We'll export this function as well. And then we'll add it here after our scraper. Let's make sure we get the arguments right here. Finally, we can capture that new list and return it. Let's test all this by running our server again and then adding a YouTube channel URL. I'm going to hit submit here and hope for the best. Said our save was successful, but what if we reload the page? Okay, great. It's there with the channel name and the image. Of course, we're going to want to make that image a bit smaller and probably do some more styling, but you get the basic idea. Let's try adding a few more channels. Dave Lee. Marquez, David Dobrik, and then refresh, and they're all there. Right, so that should give you guys a pretty good idea of how to build a full stack scraping app. Yeah, for this one, there's still stuff left to build, but it's just more of the same. More API routes, more database tables, more front end pages. So I think you guys get the idea. And if you watched all the way till the end and you're not subscribed, you might want to consider subscribing. I make a lot of videos like these and other styles too. Anyway, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys soon.